John chapter 11, John chapter 11. John chapter 11 as Jesus is getting ready to face the ultimate trial and tribulation of his life to die for sins that he did not commit as a ransom for people who may not even appreciate what he has done. Amen. And we start that journey in John chapter 11. We're going to look just at one verse, just one verse from the New Living Translation of the Bible, the New Living Translation of the Bible, John chapter 11. We're going to look at verse number four. Verse number four. When you got it, say, I got it. So you still looking? Say, I'm still looking. Amen. I'm still looking. Now take your time. Amen. Amen. John chapter 11, verse four. Your Bible should read similar to these words. But when Jesus heard about, about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness is not an end, will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. I want to talk about just for a few minutes, for the Lord's glory. For the Lord's glory. For the Lord's glory. You thought what you went through, you went through it for nothing. You think that there is no redeeming qualities, values, nor important lessons to be learned from what you're going through right now. You thought or you think that, the, that, the, that this storm that has encapsulated your entire be being is sent from hell to you. You are tired of crying. No one understands your tears. You are frustrated with laughing because no one really knows that on the inside you're crying. You are assigned with the responsibility of being the strong one for everyone else and no one is assigned to be with the responsibility of being the strong one for you. You have been tasked with being the vessel filler for others and you don't know how you're going to pour into someone else's vessel when your vessel is bone dry. You are suffering in silence. No one knows who you really are or know how you, how you really are because all they are concerned with is you taking care of them. Not caring that no one is taking care of you. You are the wind beneath everyone else's wings but nobody cares that your wings have been clipped. You were told at an early age what you can handle, God can. You were told at an early age what you cannot handle, God can. What you cannot carry, God will. You were told, you remember, you even believe that when it is too heavy for you, God will carry it and you through. So what have you done? In the midst of these trials, in the midst of these tribulations, in the midst of your silent suffering, you are visibly invisible. It's a horrible feeling to be looked at and not seen. It is a heart-wrenching existence to have a conversation and still not be heard. And the reality of it is you remember this God and you called out to him and it appears that the more you call him, the further away he is from you. The louder you cry, the more it appears that you're all by yourself. And because you have called him and it does not seem that he has answered you just like Mary and Martha feel like it is all for nothing. But the Lord sent you here today to inform you, to encourage you, to enlighten you and to let you know what is happening in your life is for the Lord's glory. Oh, I wish I would have had somebody 
that would have received that yes what is go what you are going through right now is for the Lord's glory the Lord is going to get some glory from your story brighter head brighter days are ahead because there is some glory in your story the sun will shine again because there is some glory in your story strike up the band because there's going to be some glory in my story practice your praise dance because there's going to be some glory in your story lift up your hands because there's going to be some glory in your story Shout hallelujah Because there's going to be some glory In your story Look at somebody and tell them I ain't been through all that I've been through for nothing no, 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 no. You ain't got the slightest idea how frustrated I've been, how much, how many burdens I've carried, how heavy this load is. Bag lady, you gonna perk your back carrying all them bags like that. You don't understand how hard it's been, but I'm here today to lift up my hands and tell God thank you in advance because some glory is gonna come from my story. Somebody praise God in advance. Say, I'm putting, a, I'm putting an advance payment. This is an advance praise. I, I ain't came out yet, but I'm just telling God, thank you for what's down the street. I, the doctor ain't even told me I'm healed yet, but I'm telling God, thank you in advance for the report that I ain't even got yet. I wish I had somebody that over here on this side that would just give God an advance praise. <laughs> The other day, the other day, I don't even really, I don't even like golf. Can't play golf, but I got golf on my Xbox. And I will sit on that thing, Reverend Child, from the time I get home to the time I'm ready to go to bed playing golf, beating Tiger Woods. Getting mad at the screen when I miss the easy putt. The other day, Sir Swaffer, while I was playing golf, uh, Xbox sent a sent a uh, commercial, if you would, of the upcoming uh, MLB The Show 2023. Now y'all know I'm a I'm an Astros fan, so. I'm excited about 2023, just like I was 2022. And Xbox is strategic in what they do. They, they put it out there and they say, go ahead and purchase. <laughs> you got the $50 game, you got the $75 game, and you got the $99.99 game. Of course, I said, I don't need all the stuff that the $99.99 have. So I'm just going to purchase the $50 game. Not realizing, not realizing, Sister Gary, that I was purchasing a game that wasn't ready to download yet. And I got mad, Sister McGaskey, just for a minute. But I looked up there and it said March 28th. The download will be ready. You'll be ready to play your game. Because guess what? You've already purchased it. You made a purchase in advance. So you were saying, I'm ready to play, but it ain't ready for me yet. But I'm going to go ahead and pay for it. So when it get here, it will be mine. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to tell God thank you. Even though the blessing ain't here yet. So when it gets here. So I be clearing my schedule. For March 28. <laughs> Y'all down that red gonna have about 900 home runs by the time the year is over. There's glory in your story. 
And you and I have to know how to say thank you in advance for what's on the way but hadn't been delivered yet. Read me at the text. Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says in verse uh, number one of chapter 11, uh, if I had to give you a theological points, the first one it would be connected to the Lord. The Bible says that Lazarus was sick and his sisters, Brother Edmund, sent message to the master saying in King James Version, he whom thou loveth is sick. Now don't be in such a hurry that you miss the significance of verse number three. Just from verse number three, I can deduct that there is a special relationship that the Lord has with these sisters and their brother. John says that Mary and Martha sent word to the master. The one whom you love it is sick. Cat just blew my mind because the Lord showed me something that I had never seen before. The Bible says that Mary and Martha sent message to the master. You ain't got it yet. The Bible says that Mary and Martha sent message to the master. That thou whom you loveth is sick. Now most people say the fact that he knew who they were talking about when they said thou whom you loveth is sick is indication of their relationship. Yes it is. Because Jesus loved everybody. So how could Sister Lee, thou whom you loveth signify to Jesus that they're talking about Lazarus? But there's another reason I say that they had a special relationship with the Lord. They were so in touch, Reverend Showers, with Jesus that they have the privilege of knowing where he is. Jesus knows where you are. But you ain't always privy to where he is. But Martha and Mary say, look here, Mr. Postman. You need to go right here, right here's the address. You'll find him right here at this address. Tell him when you get there that the one that you love is sick. You have to be uh, important to somebody when you have the ability to get in touch with them at all times. <laughs> you ever known somebody that some folk could get in touch with and other folk couldn't get in touch with? You ever, you, do you have one of those jobs where some folk at your job always know how to get in touch with your boss and everybody don't know how to get in touch with your, so when they want to get in touch with your boss, they got to go through the person that can get in touch with because they have specific privileges. They knew where he was, just as he knew where they was. Mm. Didn't have to wait to get a public announcement regarding his itinerary. They didn't have to have someone to tell them where the master was. They already knew where he was because they sent the messenger to him. Everybody is not privy 
to his location. But obviously Mary, Martha, and even Lazarus were extremely special to him because the sisters knew where he was. You see, they were in relationship with him. And this relationship gave them some VIP privileges with the Lord. There are some people listening to me right now who have some VIP privileges with the Lord because you are in true relationship with him. You know how to call him because you are in relationship with him. And, and when you call him, he will answer because you are in relationship with him. Tell your neighbor, don't get mad at me for the privileges the Lord has given me. He's just given me those privileges because I'm in relationship with him. Doesn't mean that I'm any better than you. Doesn't mean that I've got more than you. Doesn't mean that I've done things better than you've done. But I've talked to the master in good times and in bad. I've talked to the master when I was happy and when I was sad. I talked to the master at home on my job, in my car, in the shower, at church, on the way to church, leaving church, at the grocery store, on the way to the grocery store, leaving grocery store, while I'm in the line at the grocery store, talking about the folk who's supposed to have 10 items and they got 25. And I tell the Lord, Lord, please hold my peace. Please don't be that person. You in the express line that got 952 items. <laughs> but I got privileges, Sister Goodwin. You and Sister Garrett hadn't lived a long and prosperous life as you lived without privileges and without being in relationship with the Lord. That's why I tell you, you need to talk to our seasoned saints sometimes because they got some nuggets that they can give you to help you young folk be in relationship with the Lord so your years may be as long Ah, you know how to call him when you are in relationship with the second thing that I want you to see your emergency is his opportunity the master replies this sickness of Lazarus is not going to end in death it might start in death but it ain't going to end in death when I get there there may be death but by the time I leave there <laughs> that's going to be some life oh, this sickness of Lazarus is for the glory of God that the son of God might be glorified Jesus knew that it was an emergency for them but he needed them to recognize that an emergency for them did not constitute an emergency for him. Read your Bible. Whenever Jesus was in a storm, whenever Jesus was being tempted, whenever Jesus was in the middle of somebody else's panic, Jesus was never in a hurry. Read it. Read it. Read it. It's in all of his stories. Whenever there was a panic for everybody else, there was patience for Jesus. Whenever there was an emergency for everybody else, there was an opportunity for Jesus. His cage was never rattled. He never lost his cool. He came to the disciples in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the storm, walking on the water. He told the storm that had the disciples with buckets trying to get the water out of the ship. He down in the bottom, Reverend Lee of the, sh Brother Lee of the ship, sleeping. He wakes up from a nap 
in the middle of a storm says peace be still he fed 5,000 after taking two fish five loaves of bread breaking it praying for it and telling the people to sit down he prayed in Gethsemane for hours even when he knew the enemy was on his way he rode into Jerusalem on the back of a slow donkey walked up Calvary's hill with a cross on his back hung on the cross long enough to say seven last words and save a lost sinner he died on Friday stayed in the grave till Sunday and folded his burial napkin before he left the tomb because he didn't have to be in a rush tell your neighbor he's never in a rush he's taking his time to get to where you are because he needs you to know that he's got control over your situation your situation has, does not have control over him. He's always, somebody holler, he's always in control. He says, I can't rush to Lazarus. Because if I rush to Lazarus before he dies, that means that death has power over me. Instead of me having power over death. I need him to stink before I get there. I need him to be dead before I get there. I need him buried before I get there because God will get some glory from this story. My last point is your trouble gives birth to God's glory. I'm getting ready to leave you now Calvary. It is my prayer that the Lord bless you real, real good. But give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, everything I've been through is for the Lord's glory. Every tear that I've cried is for the Lord's glory. The devil thought I would not make it, but the Lord will get his glory from my story. Somebody here today doesn't mind testifying that my trouble gives birth to the Lord's glory. Don't mind testifying that I'm in the tomb. I'm in the grave. My hope is in the grave. My dreams are in the grave. My self-esteem is in the grave. But I believe before I leave here today, God's going to get some glory from my story. You know the story. Lazarus made the Lord made it to the tomb. Says, show me where you laid him. His sister said, hold up, Jesus. Surely he stinketh by now. I believe I got about ten folk in here that can testify everything around you is stinking. Your job is stinking. Your health is stinking. Your friends are stinking. Everything around you is stinking. But the Lord came by to work on you this morning. The Lord came by to pick you up and to let you go. The Lord came by to bail you out. The Lord came by to roll away the stone. He's been dead for four long days. Surely he stinketh by now. But the Lord said, didn't I tell you that you would see some glory from this story? Then the Lord at the tomb of Lazarus did something. He said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You've always heard me, but I said it out loud for the sake of those people standing here so they would believe that you sent me. Then Jesus, he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And the 
same one that had been dead for four long days got up out the grave and walked out. The Bible says he was still. I said he was still. He was still wrapped up in the grave clothes. The Lord said, lose him and set him free. You missed it there. That was your shouting cue. The Lord couldn't let him take his grave clothes home with him. Because when trouble showed up, he get right back in, in his grave clothes. He said, lose him and set him free. Somebody, you need to tell your grave clothes, lose me and set me free. No self esteem, lose me and set me free. High blood pressure, lose me and set me free. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Tell the Lord, get your glory from my story. Here I am. Get your glory from my story. Here I am. It's for the Lord's glory. It's for the Lord's glory. Everything you've been going through is for the Lord's glory. Watch this. The Lord, I believe, told the clothes to take human form and loose him. Set him free. Watch this. Because you can be out of the grave and be still be dead. He said, I'm not going to let you leave here the same way that you came here. So everything that's got you wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up today is your day for it to loose you and set you free some of you can't be great not because you're not great because you still are wrapped up by people who told you you wouldn't make it but I today I declare that today is your day to tell those grave clothes, loose me and set me free. Somebody, your heart is broken. Your mind is confused. But today is your day to tell those situations. Everything I went through is for somebody else to watch what I went through and to see me go through it but also see me come out of it. That they'll be able to say, you must know somebody. You must be in relationship with somebody. Because what you went through would have killed somebody else. But, but you still got a smile on your face. You, you're still lifting your hands. You, you're still clapping. You're still running around the building. I need to know there's somebody that you know. I'm done. But right now we need to change your names. The Bible says, that when Jesus got there, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And I heard somebody say that he had to specify who he wanted to come forth. Because if he would have just said, come forth, 
then the whole graveyard would have got up. <laughs> but on this day, it was meant for Lazarus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, today, my name is Lazarus. I'm about to come forth out of the graves of life. My name is Lazarus. I'm about to get from behind this, this stone that's been rolled in my way. Today, give somebody a high five and say, hello, I'm Lazarus. I'm, I'm coming forth today. I'm, I'm not going to be in the same place when you see me the next time. 